In this Warframe guide, I'm gonna tell you step by step how to mod every single gun in the entire game. No matter if you're new to Warframe or already somewhat experienced, the modding system is giving a lot of us a hard time. We just don't know which of the hundreds of mods are good and how to make sense out of all these weapon stats. And that's exactly why we're gonna talk about this today. Because in this guide, I'm gonna give you an easy to follow step-by-step -step instruction on how to understand your weapon statistics and pick the right mods for it accordingly so that your damage output will go from this all the way over to this. As always, a massive shout out to all my generous channel members who helped me keep the lights on. But now, let's jump right into it. Now, before we even look at the weapon statistics, there is one very important step that most people don't talk about that we absolutely have to take. And that is to actually go and try a weapon out. See, if you, for example, see the Telos Boltor in store, look at the statistics and you might think this is a good crit weapon, I can go and use it as my main assault rifle in the open worlds for long range engagement distances. However, what the stats don't tell you is that the Boltor family is not hit scan and shoots actual projectiles that you have to factor in, meaning it's probably not going to be a good choice for the open world. World. And that's just one example. Many weapons in the game have quite some tricks up their sleeves that you're only going to find out about if you go and test them out in practice. So in case you have the weapon that you want to mod already, then you can just drop into a mission and try it out or maybe go to the simulacrum. And if you don't, then that's usually also no problem. You can just go to YouTube and find a gameplay video or a guide on that specific weapon where it is explained in more detail. But fine, now that you know how the weapon works, what comes next? Now, this might sound dumb, but it's actually the most important thing to ask before you're doing anything with mods. And that is, what are you actually going to use the weapon for? Is it going to be your main source of damage, your go-to weapon for day-to-day -day combat, or do you need something just against specific enemy types like echo lights and demo units, or something completely different, do you maybe you want to use it only to support another weapon, maybe like as a status primer or a stat stick? Don't worry, we're going to talk about all of that in this video, but just note that depending on which role the weapon is going to play in your loadout, the builds that we're going to talk about will vary greatly, so you must know beforehand what you're about to do. But alright, let's finally look at the weapon's numbers. Now, you might be inclined to look at the weapon's damage and choose a good one accordingly, but here's the thing. Weapon damage in Warframe actually doesn't really matter at all. I know this sounds crazy, but in comparison to other games, the overall damage stats of a weapon are usually not even considered when deciding if it's a good pick or not. Let me clarify. The strongest type of enemies that 95% of the player base are ever going to face are enemies level 150-ish in Steel Path difficulty. Now, these enemies are surely nothing to joke around with, they can take a lot of damage and dish out accordingly, but with the right build and the right setup, they are absolutely no problem. And that's basically the thing. If you're going up against those really strong enemies, there are certain steps that you need to take in order to make sure that they're actually possible to deal with. Those being, just to make an example, armor stripping the enemy or applying viral status effects to make the enemy more vulnerable to your damage, and that's just to name a few. Now, if you bring a loadout into the mission that can do all these steps, then it doesn't matter if you bring something that is just quote-unquote mid-tier, because it's not the weapon that is killing the enemy, it's the entire loadout and the support from the other gear that you bring to the mission. And in case you're not even in Steel Path yet, then damage matters even less because in lower levels, literally everything can kill everything given a right build, which is exactly what we're gonna dive into now. But alright, let's finally talk about modding, shall we? And the first type of build that we're gonna look at is the one that you wanna use if you use your weapon as your main source of damage. 
In this scenario, what we're first gonna do, and this is basically true for any weapon that's supposed to deal damage, is we add more base damage. Now, there are two schools of thought when it comes to base damage. One is that you add base damage mods, like serration on a rifle, for example, and the other one is that you never add base damage mods because primary and secondary weapons have arcanes that add way more base damage than a mod could, and also it leaves the mod slot open for something else. If you're now wondering which one of these is the better choice, then it is actually very simple. If you're still pretty early in the game, or maybe you're not even in Steel Path at all, then using base damage mods is going to be the best choice here because it's just cheaper to do and you don't need that much damage until you're in the late game. However, if you're in Steel Path and you get the feeling that you're probably not dishing out enough numbers, then it might be worth it to trash your base damage mod and instead use an arcane, giving you more base damage and enabling you to use maybe another crit or status mod instead of the base damage. Afterwards, when we've taken care of the base damage portion, the next thing we're gonna take a look at is multi-shot. This one is also a must for every damage dealing gun in the entire game, because to put it very simple, multi-shot means you're firing more shots at once without any additional ammo cost. So naturally you want to have that. And how do you get it? Of course, with multi-shot mods. Now, just like with the base damage, there are also two schools of thought when it comes to multi-shot. One would be to use the normal multi-shot mods, like Split Chamber for example, giving you plus 90% multi-shot for rifles, and then on the other side would be the galvanized versions that give you a little bit less multi-shot initially, but they have another stacking multi-shot bonus on top of that if you get kills. Now, just like with the base damage, when you're still pretty early in the game, normal multi-shot mods are absolutely going to be sufficient. However, if you go into Steel Path, then you might want to opt for the galvanized versions because they're just objectively better and in Steel Path is going to be the point in time where you actually need this power. But alright, base damage and multi-shot is pretty straightforward and I'm sure you didn't need a guide to actually tell you that. But don't worry, it gets more interesting now, because now is the point where we actually need to understand our weapon statistics to know how to go on in our modding process. The stats at which we're looking now would be crit chance, crit damage, and status chance. These three are basically the most important stats on any weapon in the game in order to tell whether it's a good one and, of course, how you want to mod it. Now, the average crit multiplier in the game among all guns is around two times. If your gun has more than that, that might be an indicator that you're actually having a good crit weapon in your hands. However, if it has less than a 2x multiplier, the gun would have to have quite some more crit chance in order to compensate for the lower crit multiplier. So you can keep that in mind as a rule of thumb. When it comes to the crit chance, I also have a rule of thumb, which would be that if it is above 25% and the crit damage is at a 2x multiplier or higher, then we're looking at a crit weapon that can be fully built into crit. If it has more than 25%, that's even better. And if we have a crit weapon, then the next two mods that we want to put on it would be one to increase the crit chance and one to increase the crit damage. For rifles, usually your go-tos in this scenario would be Point Strike and Vital Sense. For Shotgun, Blunderbuss and Ravage, aka Primed Ravage if you have that. However, Critical Deceleration instead of Blunderbuss on a shotgun can be huge because it gives you that much more crit chance at the cost of just a little bit of fire rate. For pistols, in case you actually want to build them as your main damage source, Prime Pistol Gambit and Prime Target Cracker are to be chosen over any other crit mods. Of course, if you don't have the Prime version, you just go with the normal one. However, these are not the only crit chance and crit damage mods that are available in the game. All rifles, shotguns and pistols also have a mod that gives you even more crit damage whenever you get a kill. I personally don't like these mods all that much because I think if I need this crit damage in order to get kills consistently, then I would have a problem to even trigger this effect because without it, I wouldn't get the kills that I need to switch it on. And also for crit chance, there's another similar thing and that would be galvanized crit chance mods. 
Now, for those, it also always comes down to personal preference, but I would say they might be worth using in addition to your normal crit chance mods if you have the mod space at the end, but only if you can consistently nail those headshots hard in order to trigger the effect. All right, we talked a lot about crit right now, but what if your weapon of choice just doesn't have the crit chance or crit damage to even be modded into crit in the first place? Well, the next thing we'd naturally look at would be your status. Remember, that exists too. Now, when we're looking at status, then just like the crit chance, on average, a status chance between 20 and 30% means a weapon is usually viable to be built into status. However, in contrast to crit, you also gotta look at the fire rate. Because the lower the fire rate, or in case of shotguns, the pellet count that you shoot per bullet, the more status chance per bullet you actually need in order for the weapon to be viable as a status weapon. Kind of makes sense, right? If you have a rifle with 15% status chance, but that goes and shoots 20 bullets a second, it's naturally gonna deal more status effects than a rifle that has a 50% status chance, but only shoots one bullet per second. That's also why rifles that have a very low fire rate, like for example, bows and sniper rifles, are usually not worth going into status with, even though they might have an initially high status chance. To mod for status, there are two options. The aptitude mods, giving you a lot of status chance and nothing else, and the 60-60 mods that give you a bit of elemental damage and status chance. However, more on those in the section when we talk about the elements. But now that we know if our status chance is high enough and how to get it even higher, we need to decide which status effects we even want to deal in the first place. And that, of course, comes down very much to personal preference. So what I'm telling you right here will be the most efficient way to go about it. However, if you personally disagree or just like something else, then by all means, do that and have fun with the game. But all right. The best and most meta status effects that you can put on your main damage dealing weapon are damage over time effects like Slash, which is actually the best in the game, Heat, Toxin and Electricity. So mod onto it whatever you like, as long as you can ensure that at the end of the day, the damage over time element will have the biggest portion of the damage. But now that we talked about crit and status, there are two special cases. One would be that both your crit and your status stats are good enough to build for them, and the other one would be that neither crit nor status are good enough. First off, if both are good, then we can go for a hybrid build, where we naturally go for base damage, multi-shot, crit chance, crit damage, and then more status chance on top of that. And in case neither crit nor status look promising, then, and I hate to say it, that's usually the case for weapons that are simply not good. My personal recommendation, if you want to optimize your damage output, would be to simply not invest into weapons like this, but rather look for something that has better base stats to work with. But all right. We've now taken care of base damage, multi-shot, crit and status, that means there's only one big topic left and that would be of course elements. And again, there are two schools of thought here. And the point where you really decide which of these two paths you want to go into is now with the elements. If you like to go for damage over time, then do it like I said in the status portion. However, if you don't want to go DOT and you just want to have the maximum possible direct damage against your enemy, then you look into which elements the current enemy faction that you're facing is weak against and then you try to get as much of that onto your weapon as possible to secure yourself a fat damage bonus. And by the way, in case you're wondering which element is good against which enemy faction and why and when, I already have an extensive guide on this right here. But now that we've taken care of basically everything, it might be that there's still one or two mod slots open. What are we gonna do with them? First off, if you decided to go for a damage over time approach, then fire rate is usually the best thing to add now. More fire rate means more bullets put up per second, means more status effect, means more damage over time effects. Now, one idea that you could go for here, and I know this is very hated by a big portion of the community, but I'm gonna mention it anyway, is faction damage mods. 
I don't want to go into this whole topic too deep because I've talked about it a lot on this channel already, but faction damage mods are, in my opinion, the go-to mod to pick if you still have a mod slot open on your weapon. Especially if you're going for damage over time effects, because due to the way that the game calculates this damage bonus, they're even more effective when it comes to damage over time. Also, in case you want to build a weapon that goes for slash damage over time, but it doesn't really have a lot of slash to work with, you could go for Hunter Munitions, because that one has a chance to inflict slash effects when you deal a crit. So, high crit chance with Hunter Munitions is also a very broken tactic. This would be your go-to course of action when modding any weapon that is meant to be your primary source of damage in day-to-day -day missions. However, we're by far not done yet. But if you're still here, then you've probably found the video somewhat helpful so far. And if that's the case, then I would greatly appreciate it if you could spare a like to help the video show up to more people. Believe me, it truly helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Cheers for your support. But now, back to the video. Alright, the modding scheme that we talked about so far is the one you want to use for day-to-day -day combat against normal enemies. However, it might be that you want a weapon that specializes against those really hard to crack enemies like Archons, Kuva Liches, or maybe also just the demo units in Disruption Missions. Well, the way that, for example, Kuva Liches, Sisters of Pavos, or Archons work, and the reason why they take so much damage, is because they don't only have armor, they have something called damage attenuation, which means the more you hit them with a certain damage type, the more resistant they get to it. But this is sort of a hidden thing, so it doesn't seem apparent right off the bat. In this case, against those types of enemies, you want to go for specific weapons. It's not so much about the build, it's more about the gun. Weapons like the Kuva Hek or the Felarchs, for example, would be your go-to Lich and Archon killers because the way they work is they bypass the damage attenuation by dealing a lot of damage in just one shot so the attenuation doesn't have the time to build up. Now, if you want to build one of these weapons specifically against Archons, Acolytes or Liches, then what you want to go for is, just like with the normal ones, more base damage, more multi-shots, crit, but then no additional elements and no damage over time effects but rather more of that one element that is really strong against that certain type of enemy health, and then you pray and hope for the best. And finally, especially against demo units, big slash damage also works really, really well, because slash damage over time effects, as we naturally know, ignore their armor, so their health trickles down really, really quickly. In this case, you also go for base damage, multi-shot, crit, but then no additional elements, but rather more status chance, more fire rate, just making sure that you deal a lot of slashes really, really quickly. And in this scenario, faction damage is a must because it amplifies the slashes even more. But now that you know how to build your main weapon against the small enemies, as well as against the bigger foes, we have two more weapon slots open that we haven't talked about yet at all. Now, first off, about melee weapons, we're gonna have a separate video on that here very soon. If you don't wanna miss the melee video, then you might wanna think about leaving the channel a sub. So, while your main damage dealer was most likely your primary weapon, we haven't talked about the secondary yet, and that is what we're gonna do right now. Now, please bear with me here for a moment, because I know secondaries sound so boring, they're not really flashy, but, and this is extremely important, I cannot overstate this, secondaries are actually the weapon type that makes the most difference between good and top tier damage output. Please don't skip this portion of the video if you truly want to know how to deal the most damage possible with your loadout. Because now we're going to take a look at how to build the best possible status primer as your secondary weapon. Now, first off, the most important thing is of course to pick the right secondary weapon as your status primer, because only a select few of them are actually good at this. The best ones in slot would be the Epitaph or the Kuva Nukor, but generally every secondary weapon with a high fire rate and a high status chance, and maybe even some sort of AoE mechanic in which it can hit multiple enemies at the same time, are probably going to be very good status primers. Now, how to build your status primer? First off, damage is absolutely not important, you're going to deal that with your main weapon. However, what we do want is a lot, and I mean a lot, of multi-shot, because remember, the more pellets we fire at the same time, the higher the chance of dealing more status effects. 
And that neatly ties into the next stat, which would be status chance, which you of course want to max out as hard as you can. Then, also, especially in case of the Kuva Nucor, you want to have a very high fire rate because more bullets fired in a shorter period of time means, of course, more status effects being dealt. These are the main components that you need to take care of first. Then, the next question that you want to ask yourself is, which status effect do I even want to deal and which elements do I need on my weapon in order to have those status effects? Viral and Heat is a very popular combination because Heat shreds armor and Viral makes enemies more vulnerable to your damage. Pure Cold is also very underrated because it not only slows enemies down greatly, but it also recently got buffed so that enemies affected by Cold take up to 50% more crit damage from your main weapon. Radiation can also be nice to distract your enemies, corrosive for some additional armor strip, but which element you really want to go for is up to your personal preference. But remember, if you're using Galvanized Aptitude or Condition Overload, then what you want is as many different elements as possible. So try to opt for that in case you use those two mods. And if you now want to really double down into the status primariness of your secondary weapon, then you could use the Arcane Secondary Encumber to deal even more random status effects and really elevate your secondary weapon to be the craziest primer on the battlefield. But alright, you might be wondering because I haven't talked about one specific mod slot in this whole section at all and that would be the Exilus mod slot, the ninth slot that both your secondary and your primary weapons have. Well, to make it quick, it simply is not that important. The Exilus mod slot can only house a very select few mods, and those are, generally speaking, only quality of life mods that don't really enhance your weapon's performance in terms of damage dealing. Of course, there are some exceptions, for example, weapons with a lot of recoil might want to have an Exilus mod to reduce the recoil and the weapon will hit more often and deal more damage, but most of my personal weapons even don't have this mod slot unlocked in the first place. And finally, before we end things for today, I also quickly want to touch on stat sticks. See, some Warframe abilities in the game that, unlike Exalted weapons, cannot be modded themselves, still increase their performance based on how you mod a certain weapon. For example, Korra's Whip Claw cannot be modded directly, but the damage that it deals still scales with mods that you put on your melee weapon. This is what we call a stat stick. Now, when we're talking about stat sticks, in this case, the stats of the weapon that you're modding are compared completely and utterly irrelevant. The only bonuses that are being granted to the Warframe ability will be from the mods put onto the weapon, not from the weapon's base stats. This is why the best stat sticks in the game are usually very unpopular weapons because they have a high riven disposition, meaning they get really strong rivens, and if you then put those strong rivens onto the weapon and use the weapon as a stat stick, then the rivens will apply to the Warframe's ability, so it deals more damage. Now, I'm fully aware this might sound confusing right now, and it doesn't even get better if I start mentioning that some Warframe abilities don't look at certain types of mods and some abilities do, which is why I want to make a specific video just on status primers here in the future, so we can talk about that with all the time in the world. If you don't want to miss this type of video, then you might want to think about leaving the channel a sub. Welcome to the crew! Now, reading your weapon steads and modding accordingly is of course important. If you're still struggling with the more basics of modding, like how the interface and everything even works to begin with, then you absolutely must check out my beginner's mod guide right here. Another massive thank you to Akimbo Fade, Niels V, Lamies, Doganium, Demon Lord Zell, and all other awesome channel members for your continuous generous support. We see each other hopefully in the next one, and until then, as always, good loot.